The story unfolds as a conversation commences between two individuals. A young girl eagerly sets off to meet her boyfriend, Neo, marking the start of this tale. The girl confides in Neo about feeling a tinge of fear regarding their situation. Neo, in response, reassures her, affirming that within a mere 15 days, all their troubles will dissipate. With those comforting words, Neo departs, leaving Memo to contemplate their circumstances. Following this, Memo finds herself at a brothel, a decision not entirely of her own making. She intends to start working as a prostitute, driven by the need to financially support Neo, her boyfriend. It's a choice influenced by the brothel's manager, who also happens to be Neo. Encountering Madame Nemo, the influential figure in the brothel, Memo is praised for her physical attributes. A room is assigned to Memo for her clients, and an agreement is struck to split the earnings, half for Memo and the rest for Madame Nemo. As Memo settles into her new environment, Madame Nemo introduces her to the other girls in the room. Each girl assumes a different name, simplifying the process for potential clients. Thus, Memo adopts the alias Paprika. However, an unexpected encounter takes place when Memo meets a doctor. During the examination, the doctor remarks on her youthful appearance, questioning her presence in such surroundings. Initially, Memo fabricates a story, attributing her presence to family issues. But her lies are soon unraveled, revealing the truth, Memo landed in this situation due to Neo's urgent need for money. In her conversation with the doctor, Memo discloses her intention to work at the brothel for only 15 days before marrying her boyfriend, Nemo. The doctor, concerned about Memo's situation, advises her that Nemo might be taking advantage of her. He emphasizes that regardless of the girl's circumstances, once they enter this world, leaving becomes incredibly challenging. However, Memo, firmly trusting Nemo, dismisses the doctor's advice, unwavering in her faith. On that very day, Memo accepts Franco as her first customer. Franco, intrigued by the encounter with Memo, finds himself drawn in, yet Memo's behavior during their intimacy raises concerns. Madam, noting Memo's unease, cautions her and implores all clients to behave appropriately. As days pass, Memo engages in daily encounters with various men, accumulating a substantial income. Gradually, she gains expertise in this domain, adapting to the nuances of her profession. Alongside financial gain, Memo acquires a growing familiarity with this unconventional lifestyle. One night, Memo discovers that the girls in the brothel also engage in intimate relations with one another. Surprised by this revelation, Memo maintains her friendship with a fellow worker who reveals Madame's preferences for relationships with women. Although finding this unconventional, Memo continues her camaraderie with her friend. Later, Madame extends an invitation to Memo for an intimate encounter in her quarters, further blurring the lines of Memo's experiences in this realm. Days later, Franco returns and expresses his desire to engage with Memo again, inviting her to dinner. Memo politely declines, citing her existing relationship with Nemo and her commitment to seeing him the following evening. The following day arrived, and Memo's anticipation to meet Nemo was met with disappointment. He was engrossed in an unavoidable business meeting, leaving Memo crestfallen. Meanwhile, Franco, unaware of Memo's emotional turmoil, found himself joined by Nemo for dinner, a fact that Memo stumbled upon. Her heart sank as she glimpsed Neo sitting with another woman, stirring a wave of disbelief and hurt within her. Feeling a mix of emotions, betrayal, confusion, and heartache, Memo sought refuge in confronting Nino. As she confronted him, the painful truth unraveled before her eyes. Nino had been engaged in an illicit affair for nearly three years. The revelation landed like a heavy blow, shattering Memo's trust and belief in their once seemingly secure relationship. Overwhelmed by the weight of this discovery, Memo's emotional fortress crumbled, leaving her in a state of emotional collapse. Tears streamed down her cheeks, her spirit crushed by the immense betrayal she had just uncovered. In this moment of vulnerability, Franco, who had been a client turned confidant, extended a comforting presence. Witnessing Memo's anguish, he instinctively reached out, offering solace and a consoling embrace. Memo's anguish poured out in tears, and Franco, despite their unconventional connection, became an unexpected source of support amid the turmoil of shattered trust. By subtly exploring the depth of Memo's emotional turmoil and the unraveling of her trust in love, this pivotal moment sheds light on the complexities of human relationships and the resilience needed to confront life's most heart-wrenching betrayals. The subsequent night unfurled another intimate encounter between Memo and Franco. The following day, amidst conversations, Franco and Nemo revisited the topic of marriage. However, Memo, despite the remnants of her shattered heart, found herself unable to trust anyone again. Her resolve was clear, she would continue working and carve her path to financial independence, determined to craft a future filled with genuine happiness, relying solely on herself. A day later, Nino, Memo's boyfriend, appeared, and an unsettling confrontation ensued. He, being the broker who brought Memo to this lifestyle, demanded a significant share of her earnings. Distressed by this encounter, Memo confided in Madame, seeking reassurance and support. Madame, in response, vowed to handle Nino's demands, offering Memo a semblance of security. Days passed, and a new character, Rocco, entered the scene. As a broker for women, Rocco expected his share, but Memo hadn't provided him with the anticipated payment. Infuriated, Rocco departed after subjecting Memo to a severe beating, leaving her shaken and fearful. 
This unsettling incident triggered Memo's apprehension about Nino's potential treatment of her, prompting her decision to seek a fresh start in another city, hoping for a safer and more stable environment. However, fate had a twisted turn in store for her. During her journey to the new city, Memo encountered Rocco again on the train. In a distressing and coercive turn of events, Rocco forcefully engaged in intimate behavior with her, leaving Memo feeling violated and trapped by circumstances beyond her control. This turn of events revealed the harsh realities and dangers inherent in the world Memo found herself entangled in. It highlighted the vulnerability she faced, making her quest for independence and security even more imperative as she navigated through a world fraught with exploitation and manipulation. Following the distressing encounter on the train, Rocco, with a sense of false concern, drives Memo to his residence. The following morning, Rocco lays out his intentions for Memo, instructing her to carry out the prostitution duties while he scouts wealthy clients. His plan hinges on this collaboration to amass considerable wealth, a proposition Memo vehemently declines. All she desires is to secure a job at the club, hoping for a fresh start away from the distressing past. Determined, Memo visits the club, seeking employment. To her dismay, she faces rejection at every turn. Unbeknownst to her, Rocco had already orchestrated her rejection by instructing everyone in the club, via phone call, to refrain from hiring her. Frustrated and with limited options, Memo finds herself in a situation where no one is willing to extend an opportunity to her. Feeling the weight of circumstance closing in on her, Memo reluctantly accepts Rocco's offer, realizing that the job she had hoped for was out of reach. Rocco, seeing an opportunity, assigns Memo to a different position, one far removed from her aspirations, and tethering her further to a world she had desperately tried to escape. This turn of events deepened the sense of entrapment for Memo, highlighting the ruthlessness and manipulation prevalent in the world she found herself embroiled in. Despite her aspirations for a better life and honest work, circumstances seemed to conspire against her, reinforcing the challenges she faced in breaking free from a cycle of exploitation and coercion. A few days later, Mimo's uncle, who happened to be a client, visited. Upon recognizing Mimo, he expressed concern about revealing her presence to her parents. He then showed his affection by sharing how often he had thought of her, giving her a kiss. Mimo's life took a turn when her uncle, whose behavior became concerning, developed a troubling relationship with her. She confided in Rocco, a close confidant, who took immediate action to protect her, even threatening her uncle. This forced Mimo's uncle to leave the area, alleviating the distressing situation. However, Rocco, involved in a darker world, saw an opportunity with Mimo and her friend. He orchestrated an arrangement, leading them to an affluent individual. This wealthy man had an unconventional lifestyle, married but welcoming of diverse relationships. Despite Mimo identifying as a lesbian, she found herself entangled in a complex web involving drugs and unexpected connections. The man's wife, open to various connections, formed an intimate bond with Mimo's friend. Meanwhile, an unusual closeness developed between Mimo and the wealthy man, blurring the lines of their association. Franco's letters to Memo had been a source of solace and warmth in her life, gradually nurturing an emotional connection between them. Meanwhile, amidst these emotional developments, an unforeseen tragedy struck when Mimo's close friend fell victim to a severe infection, causing Mimo great distress. Witnessing the loss left her shaken, igniting a profound desire within her to break free from her responsibilities at Taraco. She felt ensnared in a situation mirroring the struggles her departed friend faced. Despite her heartfelt plea to disengage from Taraco, Rocco, cognizant of the lucrative gains from their arrangement, staunchly opposed her departure. Nemo found herself torn between her emotional turmoil, the longing to forge her path, and the undeniable financial ties that bound her to Rocco's enterprise. Feeling trapped and wanting to break free, Mimo expressed her desire to leave her job, causing Rocco to react aggressively, issuing a dangerous threat. Seeking refuge, she confided in her madam, who pledged to take action against Rocco, promising to have him arrested. Amidst this turmoil, Mimo faced another distressing revelation, the possibility of pregnancy. With the support of her madam, she sought medical assistance, ultimately undergoing an abortion. This ordeal weighed heavily on her, but she found solace in her madam's guidance and care. In an unexpected turn, Mimo's life intersected with Franco's at a party. The sight of him brought her immense joy, reigniting a sense of closeness between them, offering a glimmer of happiness amidst the turbulence. In the midst of upheaval, Franco, now a ship's captain, revealed his plan to marry Mimo and whisk her away on his boat. Over time, Mimo had developed deep feelings for Franco, so she agreed to their union. She entrusted her entire savings to Franco to purchase the boat, only to receive devastating news later, police had seized Franco's vessel, leaving them penniless. Struggling to regain their footing, Mimo found herself in a cycle of setbacks. The brothel where she worked was eventually shut down by local authorities. Memo, determined to continue his trade, relocated to a different city, while Mimo's path took a different turn. Amidst these challenges, Mimo encountered a curious young woman, a lesbian reporter, intrigued by the workings of prostitution. Mimo, feeling a connection, shared her experiences openly before sharing an intimate moment with her. Later, an unexpected event unfolded when an elderly millionaire named John arrived at the location with his son. 
it turned out to be a celebration for the young woman's birthday, coinciding with his son's coming of age. This encounter marked a unique twist in the course of Mimo's complex journey. In this intricate tale, Mimo's life took a series of unexpected turns. John, the wealthy and respected individual, developed a deep connection with Mimo. Their intimacy led to a proposal of marriage at his birthday party, despite John being married previously. Their union stirred reactions, including from John's son, who made a comment about his stunning stepmother, prompting an enraged response from Mimo, demanding respect for her boundaries. Following the marriage, Mimo's complex emotions surfaced when she encountered a video with messages for John, realizing she still harbored feelings for Franco, her previous love interest. Tragedy struck as John passed away shortly after their marriage, leaving half of his estate to Mimo. The government's closure of the city's brothels marked a significant change. Memo, Mimo's associate, visited her after hearing the news, reuniting her with old friends, including Madame and others from her past life. Despite being married to Franco, Mimo encountered a client seeking her company. Madame intervened, highlighting Mimo's marital status, but Memo assured the client that Mimo would accompany him, offering intimacy for free that day. As time passed, Mimo ultimately remarried Franco, presenting him with a large boat. The story concluded with Mimo receiving both financial and emotional fulfillment, symbolized by the union and the gift of the boat to Franco, ending the intricate journey of love, money, and the complexities of relationships.